12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is the 7th of January. Thank you for joining us. We'll check in on your weather in just a minute. But for now, we're going to talk about how we feel, or I should say how most Americans are feeling right now. And that is older than we are. That's right. I had them backwards. That's why I was looking at you funny. Yeah, oh, okay. uh, a new study is claiming that we do feel older than our biological age. A poll just done last month of 2,000 American ages 25 to 45, 64% said they feel physically older than their actual age. That's right. Um, and then it says as the messiest stresses of adulthood opinion was mixed, 40% said that managing their physical health was a challenge, while 36% said that cooking a balanced dinner every night could get annoying, budgeting 36% right there. Uh, but yes, uh, we have a lot of Americans that uh, in a certain age group feeling physically older than they really are. Uh, one expert said our perception of aging can be influenced by many cultural factors, but it ultimately has little to do with our overall state of health. It's important to listen to your body, especially when it comes to nutrition. But I think the gist of the article is, is that dealing with this pandemic, being kind of shut in for the last what feels like almost a year now, has really taken its toll. Yeah, I, I feel older. older. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> I think a lot of people feel like that. Too. I think I think people generally be in agreement. Yes. For now, let's look at today's nine at nine. You'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. In what should have been a quiet day ratifying the Electoral College votes in the presidential election, President Trump urged his supporters during a rally to head to the U.S. Capitol. Trump supporters breached security barriers and entered the U.S. Capitol itself. Congress ratified the Electoral College votes in the presidential election, certifying President-elect Joe Biden as the next president of the United States. He prepares to take office in less than two weeks. The CDC says there are more than 50 known cases in the U.S. of the coronavirus variant first seen in the United Kingdom. Most of the cases have been identified in California and Florida, but others have been found in Colorado, Georgia and New York. The CDC reporting it has seen 29 cases of severe allergic reactions to COVID-19 vaccines. Of those 29 people, 17 of them reported having a history of severe reactions to medications. All of the 29 people were treated by healthcare professionals and recovered. Any traveler entering Canada by air now required to show a negative COVID-19 test conducted more, no more than 72 hours before departure. The country's transport minister says passengers will not be allowed to board planes bound for Canada without one. Carnival Cruise Lines and Princess Cruises are beginning the new year with no stops in the U.S. The cruise companies have suspended all of their sailings from U.S. ports until spring. The cruise industry has been at a standstill since the pandemic forced it to end travel plans in the middle of March last year. American Airlines says it will not serve alcohol on its flights to and from Washington, D.C. after reports of, quote, politically motivated aggression towards other passengers and crew, end quote. American Airlines also plans to increase staffing at airports in the D.C. area. The Dow reached a record high Wednesday amid the chaos at the Capitol. Values dropped slightly when protests got out of hand, but investors remained mostly unfazed. And NASA released this photo of a canyon on Mars, the largest canyon in our solar system. It stretches over 2,500 miles across the Martian equator and is seven miles deep. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Didn't they tell us earlier this morning it would run from like New York to LA? Yes. Uh, pretty much across America. Oh my God. <laughs> Hard to imagine. Yes, uh, galactic scale for sure. <laughs> Outside with live cam, chillier this morning. It looks like the skies are trying to clear, Justin. Yeah, it's uh, it's cooler out there. We're going to see sun all day long. It's going to turn into a, a great day. A little chilly though this morning, as uh, you pointed out, Mark. Temperatures right now at 49 degrees at the airport. We do have a north northwesterly wind at 18 miles per hour. So as you might imagine, there is a little bit of a wind chill too. I'm nervous about that number. For another reason too, uh, Mount Cedar. We'll see where that goes. Uh, we, we have the latest numbers for you coming up here in just a second, but it may go even higher if we get those gusty winds all day long. We're thinking temperatures in the mid 60s today for highs 
and uh, again, clear skies. Let's look at the Mountain Cedar numbers. They're just in 19,080, so it is down a little bit from yesterday, but still extremely high. Mold is low, and uh, the radar gives us nothing at this point. We've got uh, quiet conditions across much of the area. 44 degrees, Comfort, 46 Tarpley, 50 Hondo, 50 Stinson, 49 down there at Randolph. And the forecast for today, we'll take it up to 66 breezy winds, northwesterly, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Now the big question becomes, what can we expect this weekend? What about that potential for some wintry weather? We'll lay it out all out for you coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. All right, we look forward to that, Justin. Taking a look outside with Transguide. Okay, there's a little hold up there at Loop 410 in Fredericksburg. It looks like uh, just a little bit of congestion there. Top stories we're following today. A driver avoided serious injury after police say he rolled over his vehicle early this morning. The victim told police his arm blocked while he was driving and that led to the crash. This happened around 2.45 this morning on I-10 near Division Avenue. That's on the city's south side. Now, police tell us the driver was not intoxicated and did not need to be taken to the hospital. The crash caused at least one lane of the highway to close for cleanup. It was reopened after about 30 minutes. San Antonio police are asking for your help solving two murder investigations this morning. First one happened back on December 15th. Police say they did a welfare check and they were told 62 year old Michael Broadus was not answering his phone. However, police say they found Broadus dead from multiple gunshot wounds in his home in the 300 block of Belmont. Officers say they do not have any suspects at this time. San Antonio police are also investigating the murder of 25 year old Gilbert Rocha. They say it happened in November of 2016 at the corner of Hebner and military. Police say Rocha was sitting in the back seat of an SUV when another car pulled up and the passenger in that car opened fire. Officers described it as a road rage incident. If you have any information of either of these cases, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Any morning headlines, just the morning after the final tally and the destruction of parts of the Capitol building and unemployment benefit numbers are slightly better. A UPS driver gets fired for getting caught making racist remarks during delivery. And do you feel lucky? Our David Sears is here to explain. Hey, good morning. You got to have the right numbers. And if you get the right numbers, you'll get a real big number. Excellent. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. Good. <laughs> it's a tease. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, let's start with this, though. In the early morning hours, Congress certified the electoral count, and now President-elect Joe Biden will become the next president of the United States. It all happened after the process was shut down due to those protesters breaching security lines and rushing their way into the Capitol building, taking over the halls and even the offices of some of the members of Congress. The leaders of Congress were rushed to secure areas. Other members told to hunker down. There were violent confrontations with Capitol Hill police outside and inside. A woman was shot by a Capitol Hill officer. She later died. According to reports, she was an Air Force veteran who served in Iraq and Afghanistan and was an avid Trump supporter. Three others died from medical conditions. After a few intense hours, officers finally got things under control and got the building cleared. The process of certifying the election was able to start again. We've never been deterred before and will be not deterred today. They tried to disrupt our democracy. They failed. Lawmakers and our staffs, average citizens who love their country, serve it every day, feared for their lives. This will be a stain on our country. Now, some members of Congress now calling for an investigation into how the Capitol Police were prepared or unprepared for the incident and how that can be remedied. Over 50 people were arrested and 14 officers were injured. In the meantime, after the violence in and around the Capitol, President sent out a tweet this morning, finally acknowledging that his time as president is over. Here's what President Donald Trump tweeted, even though I totally disagree with the outcome of the election and the facts bear me out. Nevertheless, there will be an orderly transition on January 20th. And he added, while this represents the end of the greatest first term in presidential history, it's only the beginning of our fight to make America great again. While all that was happening, there are still other problems to deal with. Last week, another 787,000 filed for unemployment benefits. That's a slightly less number than the week previous. Fewer people were on extended unemployment benefit programs as well. Tomorrow, the unemployment numbers for the month of December will be released. They are expected to show a continuation of a slowdown in hiring due to the increase in the positive cases of coronavirus across the country. And a driver for UPS has been fired after he was caught on camera for using racist remarks towards a Latino family while he was supposed to be delivering a package. The driver accused the family of not being able to read or write or speak English. 
UPS investigated and then took action. They said they contacted the family to apologize and let them know they fired the guy. The president of Ford Latino National had this reaction. Being that the homeowner is in law enforcement uh, and the mother is, is, has been a long-term employee in a social service agency, they see the importance of human dignity, of mutual respect, of working together as one community to make Milwaukee and southeastern Wisconsin everything that we know it can be. But it's for these deliberate, divisive acts of hate that we all must be willing to stand up and say are wrong and take corrective action on. Once again, this happening in Milwaukee. Ford Latino said the family did not get a direct apology. They still want one. They also want UPS to make investments in inclusion training and make a donation to the Hispanic Scholarship Fund to help pre-establish trust with the community. And now this could be your weekend to retire if you play the lottery. No winner last night in Saturday's Powerball jackpot is now 470 million and probably going to go up before then. This could be the 10th largest in history. And get this, the Mega Millions also a half billion dollars. So this weekend could be worth about a billion dollars between the two contests. So get your numbers out and go play, I guess. You can't win if you don't play. But. See, I knew they were 470 and 490, but collectively yeah. I didn't do the math, put them together. If you played both and theoretically won both jackpots, wow. You could retire yes. twice. You could. <laughs> It'd be like Warren Buffett or Bill Gates' best friend. A lot to donate. Buy your own jet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Buy your own island. Right. Buy your own, like, area in the mountains. You right. could go from, you know, snow to beach whenever you wanted to whenever you want oh, too many options mm -hmm. <laughs> what else could a billion dollars buy it, yeah, we, we're talking about four can you imagine if you want enough to buy the tv station you work at Woo Ooh. there's wow. a thought wow uh-huh <laughs> gets you thinking doesn't it no you should <laughs> donate mm -hmm. it all there you go thank you david or most of it talk to you a little bit right now it's 909 49 at degrees still ahead on gmsa at night a skate rink in poland got creative in order to stay open amid the lockdown still ahead how the owner came up with the idea to open as a flower shop. And lawmakers and staffers alike describing a harrowing day at the U.S. Capitol. We're going to check in with Alana Rocha in the newscast just about their reaction to yesterday's events. And we first told you about a new arts and crafts thrift store opening on the north side on Tuesday. Well, after the break, Alicia Barrera shows us all it has to offer and why it is truly like unlike any other store. And checking on your stocks, the Dow is up 237 points. We'll be right back. Adding some pens, notepads, paint brushes, yarn and paper in your shopping cart can add up pretty quickly. But what if you're told there's a local shop offering discounts of up to 75% off? So we first told you about this new store on Tuesday. The nonprofit Spare Parts is encouraging teachers, virtual learners, and even those working from home to purchase pre-loved items from their website. Pre-loved, that's right. Alicia Barrera visited Spare Parts Center for Creative Reuse and asked more on how to get bang for your buck when purchasing office and art supplies. You can find brushes that once made art, beads that could make beautiful jewelry, a rainbow of threads, old magazines for vision boards, and much more that together make up square parts. Which means that people no longer wanted these items that had potential for possibly ending up in the trash. Think of it as an arts and crafts thrift store. We wouldn't be able to do anything without our donors. Meet Mary Elizabeth Cantu, founder and executive director of the nonprofit that's giving new life to these materials. Spare Parts has been around for about 10 years. We've been doing educational programs all over the San Antonio area. And just recently, we opened up the Center for Creative Reuse. The prices will make your jaw drop. We're talking about super, super low prices and affordable and accessible. Um, yarn is up to a dollar. We're selling bundles of um, art magazines for two bucks, which again, in the hands of an art teacher is so valuable. It's a teacher's paradise. So we founded Spare Parts to support our teachers who have to pay for a lot of their supplies out of pocket. And a dream come true for parents working from home and eager to find projects for their kids. Yeah. On our online store, we have um, items that you can buy, but also kits that 
combine um, either a theme or a material or a, a specific project with a specific outcome. The Center for Creative Reuse is run entirely by volunteers who sort and price each of the items donated to eventually list them for sale online. But for those wanting to shop in store, you'll have to become a member of Spare Parts. You have um, a 30 minute appointment on your own here in the store, all to yourself. And the next one is January 23rd and 24th. Prices as low as 10 cents and 50 cents for some party supplies, but exactly how far will your money go? So they've prepared these baskets for us. $5 here. This is what it can get you. A full, new, brand new yarn, some bamboo knitting sticks. There's also some rivers, uh, excuse me, ribbon, some googly eyes and glue. And over here for $10, you get an apron. You can also buy some paintbrushes, uh, canvases. And then they put some paints and some books in here. So your money can go a very, very long way here at Spare Parts. So it's a pretty cool idea. Well, that's cool. You have the option to go in store and become a VIP member or shop online. Thank you, Alicia. Yep, it's the easiest thing. Thank you. Right now we're going to go to uh, Justin. He has an update on our pollen count, specifically mountain cedar. Mm -hmm. We are in the thick of it now. Three days in a row, guys, of very high counts. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. We're at 19,080 today, but I do have to warn you about what's going on out there. And we may see another day like this coming up tomorrow because we're going to get some gusty northwesterly winds. These yellow bars you see here, those are the daily counts. And then we've kind of put the average on there behind you. So we typically peak late January. And then by mid-February, things are starting to wind down. So we have about another month to go, but the numbers have been very high, quite literally, last couple days. Outside right now, clear skies, uh, 49 degrees at the airport. We're up to 50, though, Stinson, 51 Kelly. And you'll notice the winds north-northwesterly at about 18 miles per hour. These winds have been gusty. We do have a bit of a wind chill at this hour, but uh, that, that'll go away. Temperatures in the 40s, Kerrville Comfort, 46 degrees there. 50 in New Braunfels, 49 at Randolph. 51 Kennedy, 48 Katua, and uh, 43 in Rock Springs right now. Dew points are low. The air is extremely dry because of those northwesterly winds. That's going to continue to usher in that drier air. Dew points uh, will probably stay in the 20s throughout the day. And you look at the winds right now, sustained anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. That will be common through the afternoon. So uh, gusty conditions, and then those winds die down tonight. I think we could see a few gusts up around 25 miles per hour. This chart shows about 20 somewhere in there uh, and less wind in the forecast for tomorrow. So our last system is moving away. You see some of the snow on the north side of it there. Places like Missouri, even northern Arkansas getting some snow as that moves away. And then we're going to watch our next storm system, which right now is out over the Pacific. It's just part of a swirl in the atmosphere, and it's actually some 1300 miles away from the coast. Why is that significant? Well, until it gets to where we can actually get some data on it, a little bit closer to the mainland, we're not going to have just a great handle on what's going to happen with it. But by tomorrow, we should have a better idea and it is going to play a big role in our weekend forecast. So as we get into tomorrow, still mostly clear Saturday, an increase in cloud cover. Rain stays out of the forecast. It's Sunday where this storm system moves in and you'll notice we'll have a decent chance for rain, especially Sunday morning. And as this storm system progresses east, there's the blue color. And yes, I do think we could get some rain mixing with snow in the hill country. Accumulation wise, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Temperatures are going to be above freezing, so most of this would melt. Could we see some snowflakes mixing in? Absolutely. And we'll keep an eye on that, but I don't think the impacts are going to be huge. For the most part here in San Antonio, it's just a cold rain. It'll be chilly and damp. And that storm system, by the way, moves east by Monday. There's kind of the general idea here. Rain for most of us. Places in the hill country, though, could see that rain snow mix forecast for today uh, up around 66 degrees and sunny northwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Temperatures, by the way, will be chilly tomorrow morning down to 35, 59 for high on Friday, 56 Saturday, increasing clouds and then a 70 percent chance of some showers on Sunday. Again, maybe a little bit of mix in the hill country and then clearing for next week. So that's sort of our one chance for rain there on Sunday and it looks pretty good. Here in San Antonio, we could pick up to a quarter, maybe half inch of rain, which is a good thing, guys. We need the rain and it will be cold. Thank yes. you, Justin.
Right now we're at 920, 49 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, why one woman says she doesn't deserve praise after saving her two neighbors from a house fire. That story next. Woman in California is being called a hero after saving her neighbors from a burning home. The 76 year old grandmother was driving home when she saw the flames and when she pulled up to the home, she immediately jumped into action to help. Marty says she began. She started on the side to get her neighbor's attention and eventually a man made it out, but said a woman was still inside without thinking twice. 76 year old Marty crawled inside that burning home and rescued the woman inside. I did anything anybody else would have done with the same you 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 if you have a conscience or you human being you uh you do it marty and the two neighbors were rushed to the hospital for smoke inhalation firefighters extinguished the blaze before it could spread to other properties a lawmaker in Massachusetts wants the public to help pick an official state dinosaur. So State Representative Jack Lewis says he'll file legislation next week asking people to choose between two species discovered in Massachusetts. Lewis says selecting a state dinosaur is a good way for kids to learn how laws get made. And fun fact, 12 states already have official state dinosaurs. A skating rink owner in Poland says she's found a way to stay open amid the coronavirus lockdowns. Instead of a skate rink, it's uh, now operating as a sort of flower shop. The owner came up with the idea after the country imposed a three week closure of businesses, including hotels, ski slopes and skating rinks. The plan simple. Customers purchase access to the ring now called a flower warehouse, then choose from a box of flowers right there in the middle of the ice. Well, that's cool. And I guess if you don't want to skate, you can always ask somebody to get that for you. <laughs> that's right. Do you mind without falling on your tush going yeah. to give me a fresh flower exactly. from the middle of the rink? <laughs> There's no way you can hold on to I, the rail. I don't know how to say thank you in Polish. <laughs> if I could, I would, but I'm not. That's pretty cool. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. RJ Marquez joins us live in the studio to break down the biggest stories in entertainment. Details on a new Tony Parker documentary, an upcoming puppy bowl, and an attempted burglary at Dr. Dre's home still ahead. Plus, Bucky's is coming to Bernie. Why the company says it's taking longer than expected to open, though. And yesterday's mob at the Capitol had lawmakers and staffers ducking for cover. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune talked with some Texans on the Hill what they have to say about what happened yesterday. And as we head to break, let's take a quick look, look outside with Trans Guy there at I-10 at the Y. Things there are running smoothly. We'll be right back. Pro Trump. Protesters who swarmed the Capitol yesterday had many members of the Texas delegation ducking for cover and helping to barricade doors. Although the chaos began shortly after some GOP lawmakers led by U.S. Senator Ted Cruz launched a dispute to the certification of the electoral votes, Texas politicians, including Cruz, united in denouncing the rioters' actions. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune joins us this morning with reaction to yesterday's event. Good morning. Good morning. Alana, first off, describe some of the accounts the Trib heard from Texans on the Hill yesterday. Sure. Our Abby Livingston, D.C. Bureau Chief, uh, talked with about a dozen uh, staffers and members, um, and they really described some harrowing scenes. You know, you saw that, that photo that went viral of men barricading a door to the House chamber. Well, it turns out four Texas freshmen uh, were among those, maybe not in the image, but maybe just off uh, outside of that image, uh, and they were uh, Troy Nails, um, Tony Gonzalez, Pat Fallon, and Ronnie Jackson, uh, some with military background, uh, Sheriff uh, Nels, uh, Congressman Nels, former sheriff. Um, but yeah, I was watching uh, NBC News yesterday and, and saw a video. I was like, that looks like El Paso Democrat Veronica Escobar. And sure enough, it was. I texted her. She said she was fine, but in a crowd of people, so she couldn't speak. Of course, we are still in the midst of a, a pandemic. And so not everybody was on the floor. And I had the opportunity to speak with San Antonio Democrat uh, Joaquin Castro, who said he was actually in his office at the time and then, you know, was locked down because of everything that was transpiring at the Capitol. But he was safe. And, um, you know, it was just a, a interesting day, to say the least. And speaking about your conversation with Congressman Castro, he doubled down on his call for U.S. Senator Ted Cruz's resignation. Right. He said that his, uh, you know, said he was a smart guy and that he was only doing this to win over Trump voters ahead of a, a likely second presidential bid that Cruz would launch in 2024. Uh, but yeah, he called for his resignation. And you also saw, you know, 
from uh, Cruz's Houston hometown, uh, Mayor Sylvester Turno, Turner and uh, Police Chief Art Acevedo uh, issued similar calls after the conduct we saw yesterday. Senator Cruz was among those who quickly denounced the rioters' actions, but there seems to be a disconnect. The Tribune writes from members like Cruz who decried capital insurrection but didn't connect the violence to their own rhetoric. Right, and you're seeing people today on social media try to remind people of that, uh, especially, you know, with Cruz just a few days ago ahead of the uh, Georgia Senate runoffs. Um, where, you know, you have him saying we will not go quietly into the night and again, uh, doubling down on uh, claims of fraud, uh, election fraud, of which there are none, uh, and several courts, including the Supreme Court, uh, declined to hear such cases. Um, and so, so yeah, you have Louis Gohmert, who filed some of these baseless lawsuits. Attorney General Ken Paxton spoke at yesterday's rally with the president, and then hours later, uh, tweeted out that, you know, calm protests are the only way to go, N you know, no violence, but again, not acknowledging some of his, uh, you know, baseless lawsuits that he's been at the helm of uh, earlier in the day. Uh, real quick, uh, tell us what else is new on the trip, Alana. Well, as I mentioned, we are in the midst of a, a raging pandemic and we continue to track the cases where, you know, one in five hospital beds in Texas are occupied by COVID patients. So we have it all at texastribune.org. All right, Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. And if you'd like to read more about the events that took place at the Capitol yesterday, we have several articles on our website right now. You can also watch last night's Q&A with former Texas House Speaker Joe Strauss as he condemned the violence at the U.S. Capitol. Those stories and more are on our political page at kset.com. Outside with live cam. Let's see how things are looking out there. Sunshine over San Antonio at 933. Here's Justin. Yeah, clear skies and a little cool right now, but it will warm up this afternoon. It'll turn into a pretty nice day. We're thinking mid 60s, which is pretty close to the average. Let's look at the weather headlines that we have coming up, and there's uh, a couple that are interesting, especially as we get into the weekend. Sunny and breezy today, increasing clouds Saturday. Shouldn't be a big deal if you have Saturday plans. Looks OK, but rain is likely on Sunday. Cold rain. We're going to have temperatures in the 40s and there could be a little bit of snow mixing in across the hill country. We think it'll be light and uh, we'll have much more on that coming up here in just a couple minutes. Temperature wise across the state 49 here in San Antonio, 44 Waco, 39 Abilene. You got 20s up there in the Texas Panhandle, but clear skies for everyone. And temperatures, as I mentioned, back into the mid 60s today will also be breezy winds out of the northwest 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusty guys. Justin taking a look out with Transguide. There's I 10 and Woodstone looking good out there and yeah, things running smoothly. If there are any problems, we'll let you know. Hip hop superstar Dr. Dre shares an encouraging message to fans after he was hospitalized this week. And a new documentary that tells the story of a Spurs legend is now streaming on Netflix. RJ Marcus joins us live in the studio with a look at some trending entertainment news. Hey, good morning. Morning, morning guys. Yeah, of course, that Spurs legend would be none other than Tony Parker. You wouldn't imagine Tim Duncan would do a documentary on himself, right? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it had to be Tony you Parker. You need multiple sound bites for that. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. Yeah, it'd be like a two-minute documentary of Tim, what would he be willing to share? But in this case, Parker is actually sharing his journey from France to the NBA and, of course, San Antonio, and this is now streaming on Netflix. So the doc dives into Parker's early years playing in the French youth leagues. You will see some a bunch of several uh, home videos and pictures of Parker's days growing up overseas. Filmmakers interviewed several people for this documentary, including, of course, the aforementioned Tim Duncan, Greg Popovich, Manu, and other Spurs players and French stars. But you're also going to hear from Michael Jordan, who Parker idolized growing up, and the late, great Kobe Bryant. Another interesting part of this film is that it essentially starts when Parker signed with the Hornets after 17 seasons and four championships with the Spurs. There's footage from Parker's final season in San Antonio and the injury that almost ended his career in the 2017 playoffs. So a lot of the film, of course, is in French. It does have subtitles. It was done by a French film crew, which I actually remember Remember being at the AT&T Center a few years ago, so it's interesting to see kind of the work that they did. Uh, they'd be walking around with these like huge like camera rigs, and it was always kind of weird being in the media room with them because you're like, well, what's kind what of going are they on? doing Plus, here? Plus, yeah. they yeah. were speaking French. <laughs> they were speaking French. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So moving on, uh, rap and hip hop mogul Dr. Dre. Uh, to the latest with him, he was taken to the hospital earlier this week for a possible brain aneurysm, and is now his family is dealing with an attempted burglary at his home. 
While in the hospital, LA police said a burglary ring attempt, apparently tried to get inside his Brentwood home, but nothing was taken. Officers took four people into custody and found a backpack full of burglary tools inside the vehicle. Now, Dr. Dre posted on Instagram that he expects to be out of the hospital soon, and he appreciates all the support and love from his fans. So some good news there for Dr. Dre. All right, in other news, one of America's greatest sporting events is back next month. No, it's not the Super Bowl. It's the Puppy Bowl, which is going on as scheduled. Very afraid about the Puppy Bowl not happening. <laughs> uh, Discovery says Puppy Bowl 17. Yes, 17 already. I can't believe there's been 17 Puppy Bowls. Will premiere on Discovery Plus and Animal Planet on February 7th, same day as the Super Bowl. Team Ruff and Team Fluff will meet on the field once again. 70 puppies from more than 20 shelters will participate in the game. And that's what's really great about this event. All the animals featured are up for adoption. Discovery says past games have had about 100% adoption rates. That is great stuff. And get this, Puppy Bowl isn't messing around here with its uh, announcing crew. ESPN's Monday Night Football play-by-play -play announcer Steve Levy and SportsCenter host Stage Seal will hope will provide commentary and analysis so this is going to start at 1 p.m and stream online and guys like in my extensive research mm -hmm. of this i found this amazing headline uh which came from rolling stone i wish i had come up with this it was clear eyes full barks i don't know if you guys get that <laughs> <laughs> so this copies the slogan from friday night lights the series about the texas high school football team in the uh, fictional town of dylan right. and that slogan was clear eyes full hearts can't lose Gotcha. Uh, I got it. All right. Finally, something yeah, not puppy closed bowl's down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. By, by COVID. Exactly. Puppy Bowl will go on. I, yes. It's you were we worried. I, I was very concerned about Puppy Bowl. <laughs> I was waiting every day, every moment for an update on Puppy Bowl. But this show will go, go on. Yes, it is. Go Team Rough. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> no good. fluff. And you have your team. <laughs> Thank you, RJ. Thank you. Thanks, guys. 938, 49 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And two local Macy's stores are closing as part of a cost-cutting plan, and everything must go. Still ahead, how long you'll be able to shop the clearance sales. Have we got deals for you? KSAT Deals is here to save you money right now. Welcome to KSAT Deals at ksatdeals.com. We have a long list of bargains for you, but we only have time for two today, one for the bedroom and one for the gadget savvy shopper. Let's start in the bedroom. The Bamboo Comfort six piece luxury sheet set is very breathable. The microfiber and bamboo help to reduce allergens. Now the retail price $109, but the KSAT Deals price $32.99. That's a 70% discount. Moving on to the smartwatch. This tracks everything from calories burned to your sleeping and blood oxygen levels. It works both with iOS and Android. Now the retail price $199. Case that deal $44.99. That's a 77% discount. Now you can get these two along with several others only on caseatdeals.com. Welcome back. Uh, earlier, I meant to mention in Alicia's story, she was talking about that spare parts center for creative reuse. The location is over at Wetmore and Stall on the north side. Make sure you give them a call before heading over there because you just can't pop by. And we also have a link about this story on KSAT.com. More there. Hey, next week we start releasing brand new episodes of KSAT Explains. This is our digital program that takes a deep dive into one topic every week. And if you haven't watched it yet, you can stream any of our past shows on demand. So here's a look at some of the topics we covered in 2020. We have been trying to let you know this is what is happening to the black community with police. I feel pretty certain that not a lot of places are going to make it if something doesn't happen relatively soon. This footage, video footage, will help if the public can see a lot more of what we do and how we actually do it. The society in general would be better if we spent more on options. Everybody loves their sweet, sour, and spicy. Everybody loves it, to the little kids all the way to adults.
All those episodes and more are available stream right now at uh, ksat.com slash explains. You can also find the show on the KSAT TV app available on Roku, Fire Stick, and most other streaming devices. Yeah, if you haven't looked it up yet, that KSAT TV app has a ton of local content that you will love to see. 944 right now. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin. I know we have a beautiful day outside. It's nice and sunny, at least for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to see sunny skies all day long, Steph. Uh, one thing we're watching on Thurs Thursdays, we always check in on the drop monitor, see where we are there. You know what? It, it looks bad, but there is some improvement here. The, the recent rains have helped us out some, so that drought is kind of moving back to the west just a little bit. But we still have some areas that uh, desperately need rain. That's on West Texas. And then we also have a few spots here in our area still with an extreme drought. This area is shaded in red here, Crystal City, Sabinal, Bandera, to northern parts of Bear County. And this is an area we've been talking about, it feels like for a year now. Uh, sort of being in this drought situation. We need some more rain. We're going to get some on Sunday, so there are some more chances down the line. Let's check in on Medina Lake, too. Right now, it is down 32 feet. It's 41% full, and it's down uh, over a foot from a month ago. Outside right now, 49 degrees. North northwesterly winds at about 18, gusting to 29, so winds are already a little bit breezy. 48 Comfort, 46 Kerrville, 47 in Bandera, and then you'll find some 50s as you go south. 50 New Braunfels, 50 at Stinson, and 51 Port SA. A little bigger view here. 50s across the coastal plains, and then it gets pretty chilly as you get up towards Junction. 35 degrees there this morning. Uh, wind gusts already close to 30 miles per hour. So we'll see gusts like this, I'd say, through late afternoon, and then those winds will start to calm some tonight. But with those gusty northwesterly winds, I'm nervous about tomorrow's mountain cedar count. We'll see where it goes, but it's already high today, or very high. Uh, the wind gust forecast calls for those gusts to stay up again through about 4 o'clock. And then by this evening, those numbers will come down some. But it looks like the gusts are going to be higher than what we're actually looking at here. We're already seeing gusts around 30, so uh, that's probably going to be pretty common. Uh, as we look at the big picture, one storm system exiting our area, producing snow across parts of Arkansas and Missouri. That's going to move away. We've got clear skies for most of Texas right now. Water vapor shows these spins in the atmosphere very nicely. So there's our first spin. And then we go back out over the Pacific. Now, one thing you'll notice is there's a lot of spins going on here. There's a lot going on. Our storm system is still embedded out here somewhere. And as I mentioned uh, last half hour, it's not until it gets a little bit closer to land that we can start to grab some of that data and put that into the model and have a better idea of what's going to happen on Sunday. But uh, the computer models are hinting at the fact that we could see a little bit of a rain snow mix in the hill country. Doesn't look like it's going to be a high impact event. We're not going to see huge issues, but that it is there for us here in San Antonio, probably just a cold rain. So let's fast forward to five o'clock on Saturday. We'll start to get some increase in clouds tomorrow. By the way, it looks great. Saturday, increase in clouds and then on Sunday, here comes the rain chance. This is 7 o'clock, and I think our best chance is probably early in the day on Sunday. But you'll notice some of this blue color starts to work in just to the north of San Antonio there in the hill country. Yes, we could get some rain mixing with snow as this system passes by. But it's also going to bring beneficial rain, and that's what we really need. So about a tenth of an inch out west potentially, we could see uh, about a half inch here in San Antonio and then close to an inch a little bit uh, closer to the coast. Uh, so that will be nice to see. Forecast for today, 66 degrees, sunny skies, northwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusty. And then look for uh, 59 tomorrow, 56 Saturday, increasing clouds and a 70% chance of rain Sunday. And then 50s Monday and Tuesday with temperatures near freezing both mornings, guys. Never a dull moment. Yep. We will be prepared and we will bundle up. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Right now it's 948, 49 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning. Hey guys. Coming up on live, we'll chat with Jamie Presley from Mom. Plus Vanna White from Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. We'll see you soon here on live. And Bernie is still getting a Bucky's. It's just going to take a few more years. Bucky's general counsel Jeff Nadalo confirmed the company's current schedule has a store opening in early 2023. Nadalo says the company is waiting on significant utility infrastructure improvements before they can begin construction. The new Bucky's location was first announced in 2016. Now it will be located near I-10 and U.S. Highway 87. The new store will cost about 20 million dollars and will be more than 50,000 square feet. Been wondering about 
about that. Meanwhile, two San Antonio Macy's stores are scheduled to close this year. The Macy's at Rolling Oaks and the shops at River Center will close in the next few months as part of that cost cutting plan that will shutter 125 stores over the next three years. A clearance sale will begin this month and run for approximately eight to 12 weeks. A Macy's spokesperson says non seasonal employees who are not able to be placed at nearby Macy's stores will be eligible for severance, including outplacement resources. And Spurs are back in action tonight, taking on the Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James. Remember, these two teams played here in San Antonio just a little over a week ago, those back to back games. Well, now they get to play again one more time before they finish their regular season duels. The Spurs coming off that second game against the Lakers had a chance to win that thing. Remember, they were tied at 103 towards the end of the game, but they couldn't score. The last four buckets were all misses, so the Lakers went on to win that one 109-103. So tip-off schedule for 9 o'clock. San Antonio coming off that big win over the L.A. Clippers the other night. So see if they can get two in a row. It'd be nice to beat the Lakers, wouldn't it? In L.A.? Be awesome. It would be a wonderful start to that road trip. We'll have a wrap-up of the game for you tomorrow morning on Good Morning San Antonio at 9. Go that's, Spurs Go. That's a promise. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Thank you, David Sears. And Go Spurs Go. Outside with uh, Trans Guide right now, see how things are looking at 35 and Powell. We had some backups earlier on part of 410. We're not seeing that at the moment right now. Traffic looks great uh, coming at you and leaving, uh, going the other opposite direction, 35 at Powell. And sunny skies today, 66 degrees, a little chilly tomorrow morning, 59 on your Friday, increasing cloud Saturday and a 70% chance of rain on Sunday. That's the big takeaway there from the seven day forecast. We could see a few snowflakes mixing in across the hill country. Thank you, Justin. Very interesting. Uh, so yeah, there are uh, a lot of popular fried chicken sandwiches, you know, restaurants are competing and now we have a list of at uh, the top fried chicken places in the U.S. And according to this report, the most popular is Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's right. Conspicuously absent from most of this report is Chick-fil-A. But yeah, uh, this is what a recent report from top marketing agencies suggested based on a couple things, GPS tracking and consumer spending data that, data that they analyzed from 2020. Well, what's interesting about it is that although KFC was determined to be the most popular Nationally, it was not number one in its home state, so it was ranked fourth in Kentucky after its competitors Bojangles, Zaxby's, and Popeyes, uh, and was ahead of Chick-fil-A. All right, so Church's Chicken was the most popular fried chicken joint in nine states. Raising Cane's the most popular in nine others, including the Lone Star State. And then Popeyes was selected as a top fried chicken spot in six states, so it came in in fourth place. Zaxby's was the most popular fried chicken chain in seven states, including Georgia, Indiana, Maryland, South Carolina, Tennessee, Utah, and Virginia, and Bojangles. Some people haven't heard of Bojangles. Never heard of I, it. Yeah. I, I had, well, I had until, I think we had a story of, I think a few months ago. Yeah. I didn't grow up without it. I have a quick question though. Yes. Is, this, yes. is this just fried chicken or is it chicken wings? Like where? Um, well, see, the, it doesn't Where do we draw the say, line? But it maybe, just maybe says, that's why we don't hear about Chick-fil-A in this. Yeah, it says fried chicken chains. That's as general as it gets. There's one little con, little mention at the end here that says a market, marketing analytics firm stated that sales of Chick-fil-A have gone up 23%. So they're still doing well. There you go. But uh, well, of course, with the that mobile app. <laughs> Have a great day, guys.